Last try, then we go straight into the patterns. Still good warm up. Two. Nope, not today that one. Uh, let's see, okay, let's dive right into the pattern lesson. So, we're going to start it off with nine balls. And let's talk our way through these layouts and what comes up. If I run out, I go to ten. Nine is the minimum. If I mess it up, I go back to nine. Let's see what we can build, right? Again. And I'm not going to use any magic racks. I want to try and run as many balls, not break and make as many balls. I mean, it's good to have the, the correct timing on the break, but this is a pattern running exercise. So it's not about making three, four balls on the break and playing six, seven balls all the time. So if, if the rack is pretty poor, I don't mind, right? It gives me a new challenge. <clears throat> so. Let's start that out. There we get the breaker. Okie dokie, so, interesting little layout right away, with the two and the three. <clears throat> What's interesting is that <clears throat> the eights, kind of in the way, anywhere I get here on the two, I have to fool around with the eight. So ideally, I would like to get straight on the two and draw back for the three. The three goes in here, but that's very hard to do because straight in means I'm really flirting with the four. So actually it looks wide open, this rack, but if you look at it, I have to be pretty precise on this spot right here, this line right here, this straight line. If 
I get here, I'm snookered. If I get here, I have to fool around with the eight and I, I need a really tough shot on the three. So if I get good on this two, the rack is really wide open. It looks lovely. So this first shot right away is the key shot. Let's see what we can do. So this is where I would like to be. A little bit low left and it's all about speed guys this one. And that comes in time. Some people panic if they can't execute the shot. This takes years to develop a really good touch and some days it's really there if you feel the table and other days you have to compensate more and adjust. So sometimes I use a good trick. I, just, I put my hand on the table like this is where I want to be, get some feel for it or I put my stick on the table so my brain starts programming it a little bit better. <clears throat> So right now I'm looking at the line and I'm trying to feel the speed. Not great, but not bad. I think I can draw just on the outside of the eight and the cue ball will drag down table a little bit more. To stay down on this shot, it's pretty long, I have to put a good stroke on it. Pretty nicely done. However, <clears throat> my preference would be to go two rails around, play it very natural towards the four. I can't do that because the five is there. <clears throat> so I have to roll this ball. If I roll it without any spin, it's coming here. So I have to roll it with some inside spin, right spin, and bring it back away from the four so I can make it. So that makes this shot a lot tougher. Plus the seven is kind of in the way visually, which is sometimes tricky. You have to force your brain to not look at the seven because otherwise you shoot it right on into the side of it. So you have to, I have a full pocket, but this ball is just visually in the way. It's, it's tricky, I can't explain it. So, Take my time, good alignment. So I need a touch of right spin and follow this ball. Nice little shot. Okay. So we got through the problem area. <clears throat> the trick now is to start freewheeling and lose respect for the table. Okay, we want to stay sharp and finish it off. So I'm looking here, what I like, get under the five. We spoke about this before. If I make the five, I'm coming into the shot on the seven. Uh, the six and again from here I can very naturally come under the six and when I get under the six I can hit the rail here and come towards the seven come into the shot instead of for example crossing the shot where if I come short I have no shot so coming into the line that's what separates running racks from failing to run racks. That's the key. If you come into your shot more often, you're going to run out more often. Okay? So, let's get under this five and clean up. Boom. So the key here 
is two rails, get under the six. There's a lot of room there. <clears throat> so here I want to get towards the 7, and then I can get towards the 8. All natural lines. You just have to recognize them. So I just put a lot of spin on this and let it roll. See, the spin does all the work. And here again, I want the spin to do all the work. So a lot of left come here, and the 8 and 9 are connected. Bounce off the rail a little bit. And we got a point on the board. So let's go to 10 balls. Ten little colored balls. Let's see. Don't worry about the rack too much. If it's a little bit messy, that's good practice. You know, nowadays the players so worry about the magic rack, but if you look back, I just like to learn and look back at these champions from, you know, a few years back. Efren, Boosty, those were my heroes. And you know how they grew up? They played rotation, 15 balls all the time, and they were sometimes even hand racking. I've seen Efren, he's got 15 balls here on the, on the, on the lower rail. And he throws them up there and he catches them with his hands and he makes kind of a triangle. So, I mean, if you compare that to a magic rack, I mean, imagine breaking the balls with a rack like that and the amount of junk and clusters and the amount of development in your game you have to produce to become a better player. I mean, it's just a different world. Of course, it's 2020 now and technology and everything's getting better and better shafts and but I think those those things it also can limit you in your development if you're only playing nine ball with the one on the spot and the corner ball's dead you're, you're not really getting the full benefit out of what the game can offer you in practice competition's different of course but if you're practicing you want to you want to step it up you want to play with more balls on the table Develop yourself, cue ball control, play all games, and you'll get more out of it. You will become a better player. That's just my opinion. <clears throat> so, let's go to 10 balls. Okay, now we have to run the full rack, so if I make a combo it's going to respawn it. So already a little bit more of a challenge here. Alright guys, so what do we see? How can we get into certain lines? Alright, the three is a little bit tricky. Now one thing I see, I don't want to be straight in on the three. That gets me nowhere. So I want to be above the three. So I'm seeing here, if I can have this kind of shot on the two, from here, I can cross over and play a one pocket shot. 
same pocket. Play the two there, come here for the three, play the three there, and then I can come towards the four ball. Alright? So let me see what I what I would prefer. And with ball in hand, I always try to look for roll shots because they give you a better feel of the shot instead of drawing it. It's just a big tip, I think. Try to look for roll shots. You can judge the speed better. <clears throat> and try to come into the line right away on the ball in hand. So I see if I come here, cross it over, then I want to stay I want to stay on the inside of the four, not here. I want to stay on the inside because I, then I can get there for the five. Do you see that, guys? If I make the four there from the inside, I can come here, come back out. Then I can come towards the six. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So the two to the three and the uh, three to the four are pretty crucial shots here. <clears throat> so this one, speed is important. Okay, so be careful of the nine here. <clears throat> I'm gonna bump the rail above the nine. Good. Okay, now one little sneaky little tip here. <clears throat> if you want to avoid the five, it means you're coming here. And actually, you're coming pretty straight in on the four, and that's a little bit trouble. So there's two, ray, two ways around it. We can play with inside come here. That's probably what I'll do. But an, also an advanced shot is try to play like the 5 isn't there and if you hit the 5, you actually put it in a better place. And I don't think from here you will get snookered. If the 3 was here, different story, but it's here. So you know, let's, let's do it. If I'm not going to hit it, that means I pass it and I got my inside shot. If I will hit it, it means the 5 will come here. Q will travel on, and it, it's actually laying really good already. Just a little, a little tip. So let's see. Okay, I didn't hit it, and that means I have a good angle now. Okay? It's just a little extra thing to be aware of. I have a nice angle to play with follow, come into the shot again after the second reel, remember, come into the shot, five ball, come into the shot. The difference would be if I come here on the five, I cannot come into the shot on the six, I have to go around it and do all kind of Houdini stuff. You want to keep natural positions. Try to. Here the wheel. far but I can still handle this. Need a little bit of inside spin which would be left spin here. Okay, not enough. It would have been enough. It would have been here. And everything would have been connected. Now, I still have to do a little work. See how important it is to come into that shot? 
But that's fine. We're human, right? Can't be perfect. Impossible to be perfect, guys. Big one. We've got to stop being afraid to make mistakes. If you don't make a mistake, you will never learn anything. Okay, here we go. So, how do we want to play this combination, boys and girls? I think I just want to get straight in. Just roll it in. I could come here, but then I have to flirt with the nine. It doesn't really matter that much. As long as I'm not over here. Kind of straightish. Stay focused. Okay. Now, just one tip. <clears throat> the only thing we could mess up here is if you hit the left side of the 10 and the 8 ends up on the rail here because I have an angle where the cue ball will go a little bit here that means I have no shot so here I do want to focus on hitting it straight and I'm just gonna just lag it in nothing fancy put the 10 back Here, I can do a couple of things. I could actually stop it here, shoot the nine in the corner, but I prefer to go around the ten a little bit more and give myself some room. But be careful that I don't get behind the ten. It's better to come too far on this shot than too short. It's a little high left, three rows. Fine, just give myself some room. A couple of things I can do here. Personal preference. I can follow it out one rail. I can play for the side. That's what I think I'll do here. It's laying pretty nice for that. Just thinking of uh, this shot on the nine. It just reminds me, it's just a little thing I believe in, and I learned it from Buddy Hall, our Hall of Famer, great champion, and uh, he has a great book actually, written by his friend W.W. W. Woody. It's a great read, guys. If, guys, if you like pool and you like action and you like stories, get that book. It's a great book. From Rex to Rifleman. Awesome book. But he says at least, Buddy Hall says, if you have position, if you have position, don't play position. What does that mean? Well, it means... Kind of a kind of a beginner shot. This is it means nothing fancy, but if we make this ball, the cue ball gets here, and we kind of have a nice shot on the ten already. It's, it's kind of for amateur players, this perhaps, but you can learn something from it. If your speed control isn't that good, following one rail out and hitting it too hard, you might end up here. If you hit it too soft, you might end up here. So what I mean is, you already have a shot. All you have to do is make this ball and you're in great line. So if you have position, don't play position. It's not necessary. Okay? Just a 
good tip. <clears throat> Actually, for any level, even for pros, sometimes we do too much. Uh, so we rank 10, we go to 11. I'm on fire. Uh, where is the 11? My mouth is on fire, that's for sure. I'm talking a lot. <laughs> Take a sip of water. Okay. Eleven. I see some trouble. I see some challenges here. Woo. Oh boy. Okay, so here we're starting to get really more advanced. We have a six ball that doesn't pass. We have a seven ball that only goes here. And we got a three ball. That only wants to go maybe off a combination on the five. So this is a tough little rack here, guys. So what would you do? Well, let's talk about an angle on the two where we can get on this three-five combo. Where do we want to be on this three-five combo? That's the first puzzle of this equation of this uh, whatever so I want to get kind of here right I want to get straight in then I can see it best if I get here five's pretty close but it gets harder from here I can work this so that's what I want to get for my first challenge so how can I get here from the two well if I have this kind of angle, I can just come back to the middle of the table. So that's good. That gives me hope. So how do I get in that line? Well, by not doing too much. If I put myself on the inside of one and draw this way, I have that angle automatically. So let's see. Now it's all speed. Okay, that's good. Again, uh, I'm just thinking, guys. Just trying to think if I want to open up the seven ball with the combination, like from here. Hmm. Interesting. It's kind of a good chance, right? Because getting from here back to that seven is really, really tough. So straight in is a great option for the combo, but I could take it a step further and maybe come here and do something with these two balls and solve another problem in this rack. Okay, now if I come too short, that's what it is, but that's what I'm trying to do, try to get somewhere here. That's pretty nice, I like that. So, 
decision time. <clears throat> Let's see. I think if I roll this ball in with medium speed, that I'm just going to hit the outside of the seven. And I would like that. That would mean the seven comes here. It could come in front of the side. It could come just to the, to the rail. As long as it opens up from that ten, that's another problem gone. And then I got this guy to solve later. The only thing, I have to watch the speed here because if I hit it too soft, it might just graze by it. So I have to hit it with medium speed so it just flicks that seven. Keep your eye on the combo, guys. When you've made it to this decision, now it's back to the combo. Make the ball. Afraid of that, to be honest. That I was, I had to hit it with the speed to open this guy up, and the three could get away from me. But that's, see, I'm, I'm, while I'm talking, I'm learning something because I'm thinking, okay, the seven actually did, did this and this, so I could have hit it a little bit softer. All I needed was to get it away from the ten, so I learned something there. I could have controlled the three a little better. See, that's why this stuff is interesting. Let me see if I can kick it in. Come around, two rails, maybe try and come into this ball. Kicking systems are for later. So let's see what I can do here. Oh, get a reward, come on. Good try. Uh, let's see something funky. If I do these ghost drills, uh, I count everything, also luckies. So I'm trying to blast this ball into the four, try to make the four here and carry the cue ball onto these. Maybe I get, uh, I get some action there. No. Okay, back to 10 balls. That was a tough layout. But you see, you're learning a lot, even with 11 balls. Play the amount of balls that's challenging for you. Okay, back to 10. Nice little layout. So the one, two, three are all connected. The six and seven are pretty connected. And the nine. So the four to the five is the key of this rack. One, two, three is uh, pretty, uh, pretty elementary. Stop shot, stop shot. And I think I have two options on the four ball. I get here on the three. I could play here for the four, two rails or one rail, and come back out for the five. Or I could come a little further 
here, play the four on the side, and come back down the table. That's what I think I'll do. I just like the shot better. It's a little bit easier. So, stop, stop. Nothing wrong with that. come two rails into the line of the four. Hit it a little bit hard. I can't correct this. I'm trying to come here. This is fine. So, what's funky about these, this is just a little advanced tip. A lot of times if you come here and you, and you don't uh, take any care of it, <laughs> this point of the side pockets come, comes into play so many times. It, it, it's caught me so many times, man, where you just hit it, boink, and now you're here on the five. So, it, it doesn't hurt to make a commitment, like, do you want to come here, or do you want to come here and then play there, and I think that's what I'll do. I want to hit the rail in front of the side. Just a little bonus tip. Here we go. Okay, so you can do a lot of things here. Play for the middle of the table, draw it back. You could play it here, follow it out a little bit. It's what you like. Don't get too far, then you have to shoot with the bridge. That's about it. Gonna draw it back. About, I'm trying to come up to here. Ooh. Too much spinach yesterday. Ooh, I got into that ball really a lot. Uh, Okay, so here, again, personal preference, guys. <clears throat> you could draw it back for the 9 here, play for that side of the 10, because the 10 is a little bit over the middle, the middle line, so it kind of wants to come here, but it's not a big deal. If you put it here, draw it back, play it there. Far. I'm just going to draw back here. Okay, we'll try another 11 ball. Okay. All 
right. First thing I see right away is the five ball. My eye goes straight to the five to see if it passes the 11. Which it doesn't really do. So that spells a little bit of trouble. Because you see the six is all the way there. The one, two, three, they're looking delicious. But how do we get from the four to the five and from the five to the six? That's where it gets more interesting. Let me think. This looks wide open, but it isn't. Um, ba -ba 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 what are we going to do, guys? See, because this, this 9 ball and this 11 ball are kind of in the way of getting down table easily. So I have to play field goal position in between some balls and get a good angle on the 4. So it's not easy at all. But I think that's what I have to do. If I get here on the 3, I can stun it down. I'm going to try to stay above the 4 or straight in. Play for the five. I have to shoot the five in that pocket. And then maneuver my way back down table. Uh, that's not that easy. Get in between here. Or around. Or come to the short side of the six. Because these three are all in this. In these lines down table. So. Uh. You know, <clears throat> thinking one shot ahead, and that's to play a one six combo and get rid of that shot from the five to the six. What do you think, guys? It's not that easy. Let's skip it. Let's see if we can do nice cue ball control and get the uh, back down table. So, one ball. The two ball. And here the story really begins. So again, I'm trying to visualize this. Not easy. You could also bump the rail, but the angle suggests that I could get in trouble here. Uh, so this is all about percentages. What gives me the big, biggest percentage of running out? What do you think, guys? I think I might have to bump the rail because then I don't risk of getting snookered. Then I don't risk of getting here, right? If I bump the rail, at least I'm guaranteed to get a shot. And that's smart play. This is never going to be easy, so I have to make the best of it percentage-wise. Here comes the 11. Ooh. I might have gotten a little bit lucky there. Uh, not quite sure. Let's see. I'm thinking, come high on the five. How do I get back? How do I get back? That's the, that's the question. I have about half a pocket on the five. But just as an example, I'm going to put it back. Because that would have been lucky. I'm, I just want to show what my original plan was with this five ball. So I bumped the rail. I have a shot. If I get one rail, get high on the five. I can come this way 
It's never going to be easy, remember? I can come this way with some left spin. And that's what I've got to do. So I want to get here. That's where my focus is. Come on, horsey. Short. Ooh. Just short. Now I have to use the bridge, I think. No, I can use extension. The beautiful new Mongoni extension. Love it. There it is. So I want to miss the nine. Try to come in between the nine and the seven. Here. Oh boy. Hit the seven, right? Yeah, I hit the seven. I still have a shot. Never gonna be easy this rack. Some, sometimes it takes two, three, four shots to get back into position. So, what do we do? Let's go around the seven. Or, yeah, let's go around it. And give ourselves some space. I don't like to slow roll this ball for the side. I think it's risky. You can also play one rail if you like that. Here, also fine. Shot a little better. Okay, getting closer to the finish line. The nine just passes the eleven. So let's be smart because we need an angle on the nine. I think to get back for the ten in the side. So this is where it's about keeping your focus together. Straight in on the eight is fine. Here is fine. Make the ball. To the line of the nine, we can we can draw this. I'm going to follow it. Personal preference. There. And I like to draw this back for the side. Don't hit it too hard. It's a nice smooth stroke. Perfect there, make the ball. A little bit short, but that's fine. And we got through that rack pretty nicely. Let's see if we have one more in us, guys. Twelve balls. Climb that ladder. You know, you can do pyramid. Let's say you're an amateur player. You've been playing a few years. And you struggle to run out eight balls. Right? Eight is your limit. Well, start out with six. If you run out, go to seven, eight, perhaps nine. And then, for example, you can climb back down again. They do this a lot in running, in cycling, pyramid training. So six, seven, eight, and then back seven, six, okay? Or you can just do eight balls the whole time. Play the ghost like this, break ball in hand, play race to 10, play race to six, play a race to 30, whatever you have. Play 10 ahead. 10 ahead is where, let's say you run out three, you miss, you're back on two. Miss again, you're back on one. 
You run out three more racks, you're on four. You have to get ten ahead. You can do six ahead, seven ahead, whatever kind of time and challenge you have. You can mix it up to keep it interesting. All right, let's do 12 balls. And one second. Um, what is this? Wow. Yeah, we'll do a last rack of 12 balls. And then I'm going to do the one pocket ghost thing. Boundaries 15. I can't beat the ghost 15, uh, but I'm like 50%, 60%. So if I do 10 racks, I can run. If I'm on a good day, I do five, six, seven. But I have a hard time winning. I, I've never won against the ghost. Like uh, if I play a race to 10, no. <laughs> so that's that's good practice for me. Okay, here we go. Twelve balls. Uh-oh. Tricky little layout with this one and two. Uh-huh. I'm not even sure if I can make this one. I can spin it in. I'm going to be kind of straight in on the two, and I need to get here for the three. That's the only option I have to make the three. Uh, see, if I, if I draw it into the six, let's see, see if I can bring the cue ball a little bit higher. I'm going to hit the back side of the six, so that's not going to do anything for me. I can't draw it into the six, I think. Whew. I think I'm going around it every time. No, I can't make it from there. I have to do it from here. Okay, I have to commit to something here, guys. This is tricky. I cannot bring the cue ball up higher on two, so the best I'm going to have is some kind of freaky shot on the two ball from here. I want to try and perhaps hit the ten and come back out with spin. I think that's all I have. I don't... Unless somebody sees something. can shoot in the corner. I, I have a combo, but it's, gonna, it's pretty tough. Uh, okay, commit. This is what the table gives me, this is what I gotta do. It's never gonna be pretty. Okay, let's see. Draw it off the ten. Whew. Uh, that 
six go in the way. See, I wanted to draw it off the ten and spin down towards the three. Okay, let's take a ball hand on the three that I'm hooked and run through this rack. <clears throat> This is a lot easier. <laughs> uh, see, this is all connected. I can shoot again. If you have position, don't play position. If I make the four, I can shoot the six in the side. I don't have to draw it back or go off the rail. It's right there. I don't have to do anything. Play position for the six in the side. Roll on for the seven. Seven, eight. Come back for the middle of the table on the nine. Draw back into the line on the 10, 10 ball, 11 ball, 12 ball. That's what I see. Sell some room. Roll this ball in. Try to get straight on the seven, that's fine. Stop shot. Here we gotta go middle table, one rail. Middle table's your friend. Speed. I like to use this rail and spin into the line. It takes a little bit of practice avoiding the side pocket. It's a tip higher than draw and with some good spin. See, then it just carries itself down. Here you can slow roll it or I prefer to go two rails because I can hit it a little more clean. I don't have to baby stroke it. There, and I come into the shot on the 11. So, do we want to be a hero or you, and draw the hell out of it? Or is a stop shot also fine? I think a stop shot's fine. go to the one pocket ghost I hope this was useful for you guys just a little rotation hour lesson pattern play how I take my way through the racks <clears throat> and now we're gonna get all 15 balls and the way that you do it uh, one second. You can do it two different ways. Actually, maybe three different ways. The one way is you can break. Don't take ball in hand. You choose your pocket beforehand. You break. No ball in hand. That's how they used to play at the derby. One pocket challenge. You could, for example, do break, choose your pocket, then take ball in hand, but the pocket's already fixed. That's the pocket you're going to shoot at. Or you could, for example, also do break, take ball in hand behind the line. Something funky. Right? So three options. I'll be right back, and then we'll do five racks, five racks of this, and my goal is to run 50 plus. Okay? Uh, that's 10 average. I'm going to try and talk you through it.
So, for this example, I'm going to switch between pockets and I'm going to start it off playing it in all my balls in that pocket. So the break is of course important. I want to try, it, it looks funky but I learned this from Pegalion. You would think you want to break from here but he breaks from the other side and I believe it's to slow the, uh, the impact of this ball down. That this ball doesn't go too fast to the side pocket. If you break from here and hit it there, it wants to go right away there. From here, it kind of slows down a little bit more. So. It's not the greatest break. Take ball in the hand. And here we start with the thinking process. Normally what's ideal is if you have a ball that's somewhere here and you can go into a cluster and open them up that way. Uh, that ball isn't there now. So <coughs> I could do something with this guy right away. There's a high risk I'm not going to get a shot. Um, however, I don't see many other options of opening the balls. Um, and moving them to my pocket. That's the problem. Now, this guy's always for last. You want to bank this guy, maybe one of your last balls. But I'm trying to see how I can run as many balls as possible. Now, what I do see, if I go into these balls, right? If I hit the eight, the six will come out. If I hit it full, I'm screwed. I get stuck on this ball. I, I don't think I'm going to have anything because the three is blocking the two. If I hit the high side of the eight, Cuba will go there. And I think it will go in between these three. So the six becomes critical because if the Cuba ends up here, I have nothing. But if the six comes there, I could have a shot and maybe I open the balls a little bit more. So it's worth a chance. Worth the chance. I think I have to take that chance, otherwise I cannot run more than five balls here. And I want to try to run 10 to 15 balls for you guys. Or at least talk my talk my way into it. So okay, I'm gonna try and take a risk. I could I could get nothing here and I could run all the whole rack. Because I'm gonna open up more balls. So hit that side of the eight, that's the goal. Oh boy. Hit the wrong side of the eight. But the six came out, like I said, I got a little lucky with getting shot on the two, or it would have been all over. So, plan B. Okay, what I see here, if I hit the three, I open up more balls, and I could get a shot on the six and nine. And I want to... My... My feeling says I don't want to hit this one too soft. It's still risky. A full hit would be great. Woo! Ok, 
going to take another chance. Okay. So we open up some balls. Still, this is this is really tough here. Sometimes the thought process takes a while. Some racks are just easier than others. Uh, See, I'm thinking if there's a way I can go two rails into this. Kind of advanced, but I want to I want to get aggressive on opening up this 110. If it doesn't work, I hit the 5 and I should still get a shot on the 15 or the 9. I'm just going I'm going to take a chance here again. <laughs> Wasn't that good, but oh, tough rack here. See, this is what I like. You learn how to nudge balls, squeeze balls. Here, I want to just hit the one. The one will hit the ten. One goes here, ten goes here, and I got a shot on the nine. But I have to hit the one pretty clean. So a stun shot gets me on the five. I just gotta stun run it through. No, oh, I missed it. Damn it. Tricky shot. So that's three, six, nine, twelve. I only made three balls. Wow. See, that would have been one where I would have gotten things a little bit more open, but I didn't break them that well. Then it's trouble right away. Let's see if we can break them a little bit better. Gets me nowhere. <laughs> That's fine. Let's practice. So those opened up a little bit better. So I got some nice action here. I think if I can just get on the three, I can get around for these two. Then take the ten, swing it around, take one of these, and get to the leftovers.
This is really hard to do with talking at the same time. Uh, This four, this nine doesn't want to pass the fourteen. If I make the fourteen, I get nothing after that. So that's where the five comes into play. You can play the five into the nine, open them up a little bit. Um, but first, I'm going to try to get one more ball here or two. <clears throat> Such great practice this. It's, you gotta really focus hard. You can also use the 11 bump the 9, then you have the 14. See, so you learn to see more options. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go around these balls, see if I can get here on the 11. If I come short, I can shoot the 13. If I come with a good angle, I can use the 11, hit the 9. Bank, but I gotta make another one. <laughs> Let's try to bump that nine on the high side. Nine comes here. Hopefully, cue ball here. Not easy. No. Oh, yeah. Tough. I hit it, but not right. Uh, what's there? I'm in trouble, guys. Uh, blah, 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 blah. 
Drawing three, rail the eight. Drawing two, the seven, one. Get three, six, seven, eight balls. Do some more damage. Puts me on eleven out of two racks. Ooh, it's not a lot. Pocket again. Okay. Ball comes back as last, I believe. Okay, this is a little bit better. Got the Seven, six, that won't go, but I can use the eight or the twelve. And then I have the fourteen as insurance. So the four is blocking those two. So let's take the four out right away. I think that's a smart move. And I think I would like to get straight on the eight. Then I can use the twelve and open them up. Right out of the gate. So let me go. Two rails, I think. Oh man. I'm not executing very well. Okay, I'm in trouble right away. Let's see if I can get on the nine. And two goes there as well, so that's good. That means I can get from the two back to those balls. Uh, I like getting on the 15 now, then the nine, then the two or the 11. All right, bear down. Good. Yo, one second. Sorry guys, I got somebody picking up a package. One minute. Okay. So back on the eleven. Uh, back on the nine. I mean. Uh, let's see. I just want to make it and get on the two or the eleven.
Alright, that's good. I can use the 14 next to get behind these balls. And then I have another chance to open up to, up to 6, 7. <clears throat> Swing around two rails. Come here. And then I'm, I have to go into these balls. That's my only chance. Unless I want to bank all of them. Not hard enough. That spells trouble. That's a little bit disappointing because I had a good chance to use one of those balls. <clears throat> and uh, earlier on also, you know, so that's just how it is. But now we have to bank them because I can't go into them anymore. Uh, we've got to bank the one. It has to be done all the way from here to avoid a double kiss. Let's see. Hmm. Now, boy. I was thinking if I could get here on the 6, bank the 6 in, and then play position on the 7, but the 6... I'm not sure if it's going to pass the 13. From here, yeah, there's a chance. I could do that. I think I'm going to do the 13 first. The free ball. Boy. Oh. Wow. Okay, got to do a little trick shot. 13, 10, and then come down table. That was a nice one there. Uh. Okay. Still have a chance. Can hit the six here. Got a slight chance, guys. That would be awesome. No, nope. didn't hit it. Scratch. So that doesn't count. And there was a ball here that had to come back. So two minus two there. So I made nine. I got a chance to run a little more. Sometimes it's hard to talk and run out. I got nine out of three. Boy. Two more racks.
pretty nice spread. Again, I have some nice options. This 15's blocking everything. So if I make the 6 first, I can't make these anyway. If I make the 6 first and bump the 15 softly, I'm thinking. Soft. Use the 13 to knock the 14 open. <clears throat> that could give me an angle on the 7 to pick up these two. Or an angle on the fourteen. Okay, now I could take both these balls out. <clears throat> what you can do also is leave one of them because they're kind of an insurance ball for later on. Perhaps if I want to pick up one of these guys. Uh, but I can do that on the 7 as well. Seven's, the seven's blocking these, these two at least. This one I might have to bank. Seven's blocking these two, so I have to get that guy out in order to run these. So what shall I do? Shall I pick it up, the 12, right away? Or shall I leave it? Mm. I think I'm going to leave it, because the angle on the 9 is not that great. Okay, commit and continue. That's not the greatest shot. Past the eight. Let's see. Come here. <laughs> Trying to shoot the fifteen.
See, this is where that 12 could come in handy. I can play position for the 12 now <clears throat> and try to slide back towards these balls. Could give me a chance. Gotta stay above the 12. sneaky, I have to try and come here. So a lot of spin, high right, and try to just miss the five. Bank the 11 and avoid the kiss. Oh, yeah. Let's see. That's pretty nice shot. So I have to do another one. Let's do the one. If I make the one, I have a chance. Nope. I must spin. I did an eleven. Tough drill, this guys. Great practice. 11 puts me on 31. That's 30. Put one here, 31. Last rack. So, oh. they didn't open up that good there. Be aggressive right from the start. I'm going to go into a lot of balls here, like that.
trying to hit the four. No. Too bad. Took my eye off the ball. Focused too much on getting around the six, and I wasn't committed enough on how I was going to do that. With some I was thinking of some inside spin to break it here instead of getting this, maybe. Let me see. That and then break. Yeah. Okay. Learn something. So that was 10. That puts me on 41. 41 out of 5. I was going for 50. I tried. Try this yourself. It's not easy. But if you want, in the beginning, maybe you can uh, break them a little harder. You know, I'm trying to get them here, uh, keep them here a little bit more. Uh, you could break them harder, but then you're going to have more balls in the kitchen. So it's whatever you, uh, you want to give yourself, right? Great training, uh, great for your focus, nudging balls, patterns, thinking ahead. Um, so, yeah. Uh, thanks for watching. Again, appreciate it. Makes me focus harder. Um, and I'll be back soon with some uh, eight ball pattern. Uh, lesson, uh, same as this with the nine balls, but then with eight, and also some straight pool coming up. So stay tuned. We've got the YouTube channel, check it out. My channel, you can subscribe. Uh, all the workouts will be uploaded there. If you want to reference them back for future trainings for yourself, feel free to go ahead there and pick them up. All right, take care, guys.